Happy Saturday, folks, and welcome back to another episode of It's At Least Five O'Clock Here. Today, I'm doing a cocktail that is a special request from my friend Mary, and it's one of her favorite bourbon drinks, and that is the Omar Bradley. The Omar Bradley is a take on the old fashioned, which uses orange marmalade in place of uh, fresh fruit, which as you all know from my uh, cocktail videos that I actually don't like putting fresh fruit in old fashions. Um, but back in the 40s when he was drinking these, uh, that was commonplace and you know, that's fine. And by the way, if that's how you like them, that's how you like them. It's just not how I, I prefer them. Now, the reason that this drink came about is because Omar Bradley, when he was in uh, North Africa during World War II, Fresh citrus was not super widely available when you're on an army campaign. So one of the things that they have a lot of though in, uh, well, obviously when you're with troops, you know, you have a lot of things that are preserved like jellies and marmalades, but then also North Africa is so well known for its uh, preserved fruits. So when I think of like Moroccan and Tunisian cuisine, for example, I think of tagines and preserved lemons, which are amazing. And so it takes this really cool little different take on the old fashioned because it's pulling in with the marmalade, this little bit of almost like bitterness from, because marmalade has the, uh, the actual, it's got the, like, can you see that piece? It's got the peel in it. So it has a little bit of that bitter notes to it as well as the sweetness. So we are going to make, I will tell you actually how to make the traditional Omar Bradley, but then we're actually going to make my little take on it because I would think that he would have access to a couple cool spices uh, that were actually, you know, they're super prevalent in North Africa and all over the Middle East. Uh, so I'm gonna give my own little take to it as well. So Mr. I'm sorry, whew, almost messed that one up. General Bradley, he was a five-star general and he deserves the, <laughs> he deserves the title. Uh, so General Bradley actually went to West Point with Dwight D. Eisenhower. And he went through World War II, he led huge campaigns, and was a big part in the, the actual victory of um, the Allies. And so one of the things that he did when he came back from the war, he headed the Veterans Administration. And then after that, in 1948, he was appointed the first ever chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, which now is a well, maybe not now, but normally is a, it's an extremely important position, very important advisor to the president. Um, and it's kind of a big deal, normally. Anyways, so Omar Bradley though, he was also quintessential and essential in the entire pulling back and dismissal of Douglas MacArthur during the Korean War because Bradley was actually in charge of a lot of the policy making during the Korean War. And when MacArthur was like, no, we gotta do more, he was like, I don't think so. And that's why MacArthur got pulled out of that situation, probably for the better. So let's stop talking about military history. I know some of that's y'all's thing, but, uh, oh, also one other thing, and this is for you, Dr. Farley, uh, and you probably know this, but you know, I think I should shout it out anyways. So uh, Omar Bradley was also quintessential in the trans, Formation, transfiguration, transmogrification, the change of the 82nd Infantry Division into the 1st Airborne Division because World War II, as many of us know, uh, is when airplanes first became a huge deal in warfare and kind of changed everything. And that's why we now have an Air Force. But that's a different story. And I know somebody, if you don't think that there should be an Air Force, or you think there should be an Air Force, I know who you should talk to, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about a drink. So let's get to it. We're gonna start out with two ounces of bourbon. I'm gonna actually finish off this nice bottle of six-year-old Heaven Hill. Uh, it is a little bit of a bottom shelfer, but man, it's a cocktail workhorse and I really like it. So, and I love everything out of Heaven Hill. It's um, my favorite distillery uh, for a lot of reasons because they also make Elijah Craig, which is my numero uno. So we have two ounces of bourbon. You can use bourbon or rye, uh, but make sure it's somewhere between 90 to 100 proof. Now, the second piece, which makes a traditional Omar Bradley is Mama Lad. And I got this actually from the um, Friends, it's a Kentucky Proud product, Friends Drift In in Pikeville, Kentucky. It says on the back that you can use it with 
the chicken meatball appetizer breakfast muffins, but I would like to add a piece. It goes well with bourbon. So we're gonna add one teaspoon of this to here. Now it was said uh, that, you know, oh well, he couldn't find oranges and I'm gonna do a little bit of a heaping teaspoon. I know I'm a real stickler for measuring, but in this you're gonna lose um, a lot of that in the shaking. So, um, you know, a little bit more, it's okay. All right, so we've got two ounces of bourbon, a heaping teaspoon of our orange marmalade. You can actually make orange marmalade, and straight up, I did try, and then I got bored with it, so it molded over in my fridge. Um, because I didn't get past the whole, let's boil oranges in water and then scoop them out and then do stuff. I just couldn't. So buy some, buy local. I'm sure that lots of uh, cool local places actually make orange marmalade, but I'm sure like Bon Maman does too. Um, but yeah, then you can have it on your breakfast muffins and meatball appetizers. Also great on toast. Two ounces bourbon, one heaping teaspoon of orange marmalade. Now, this is something that he might not have had, but this does really add a nice brightness to the drink. And we're gonna do, so the original recipe calls for a, sque a squeeze of half a lemon, but generally a full lemon is gonna yield about one ounce of juice. So I prefer, again, stickler for measuring. Um, I'm not a control freak, you are. I'm gonna measure uh, one half of an ounce because that's gonna be approximately one half a squeeze of lemon into uh, my jigger. And then, you know, maybe if you just have like a sad lemon or a tiny lemon or one that just, you know, isn't feeling it that day, you can make sure that you've got enough lemon in there. So that's half an ounce in here. Now, the last ingredient for the traditional one is Angostura bitters. And as you know from my last old fashioned video, I do two dashes of bitter. So I am gonna do two dashes, which is three shakes per one dash into the shaker. So. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, here's where I put my twist on it. I think that it does actually need just a teensy bit of sweetness. Um, you're gonna get a lot of tartness and bitterness. Um, you are gonna get some sweetness from the orange marmalade, but it's marmalade, 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 marmalade. I'm gonna put a quarter of an ounce of rich simple syrup in here just to kind of round it out and add a little bit of sweetness. So, half an ounce. I think I almost started to whistle the John Cena song. It's very uh, catchy. Also, did you know that on John Cena's, like, he calls himself a rapper? I think that's funny. I know that he did that one song that's his, but that's what we call a tangent. Let's get back to it. Now, one of the spices that would have been super prevalent in North Africa and still is today and has been for millennia uh, is cardamom. So all over North Africa and the Middle East, cardamom is an extremely uh, common spice. It looks like this. Smells amazing. By the way, if you can get fresh cardamom pods, uh, put it with your coffee and grind it. Or if um, you can find uh, Ethiopian cardamom too, which looks more kind of like peppercorns, but it does also look, um, it tastes just like cardamom. It's very nice, also goes really well with uh, ground coffee. And that's a traditional Arabic preparation of coffee, which is to grind your beans with the cardamom. But since I'm not making coffee, I'm making a whiskey drink. Um, definitely haram, but um, cardamom bitters. Fee Brothers has cardamom bitters, and I definitely impulse bought this on Amazon. Um, so I'm gonna actually add two more dashes of this because this is gonna add a little bit of a layer of spice and kind of help transport us to uh, the mind space that Omar Bradley was in when he actually created this drink. So I'm gonna do, again, six shakes in here to be two dashes. One, two, three. One, two, three. And cardamom is just such a beautiful fragrant spice um, and it adds like a really nice roundness to this and I don't know I just love it ah. so I'm gonna take a bunch of ice pop it into my shaker and then you know get out all of my pent-up quarantine rage so here we go shake it for about 20 seconds oh yes it's so nice you know, maybe get some squats in or, I don't know, choreography. I guess that's more like disco. I don't know. All right. I always say that like when your fingers start to get a little numb and uncomfortably cold, you've done it right. That's probably cooked enough. 
So let's whack this thing open. And I'm going to take a rocks glass uh, because I'm valued guest number one today. And I'm going to double strain this actually into the rocks glass. And the reason I'm gonna double strain it is because of all of the gooey bits in the marmalade and I will show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna grab my Hawthorne strainer, pop it on top, and then I am going to strain this into my glass. And it does get a little clumpy because of the, the orange marmalade because there's pectin in it. I have seen recipes that doesn't require pectin. Um, it's more of like a fresh marmalade. Um, but usually if you have jams or jellies, you're gonna have gelatin or pectin in it, which is the binding agent as well as like a thicketer. Um, and so that's why jams and jellies are jelly-like. So I'm gonna show you kind of what it looks like. There's all that gunk in there. And so I've just taken my bar spoon and just kind of mooshed it just to make sure I'm getting out all of these nice liquids. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of orange peel and I'm just gonna express it off across the top because I wanna smell that beautiful bright orange flavor uh, and scent when I drink this. So you're just gonna take a little bit of orange and just, you know, squeeze that out across the top. This piece is probably a little bit too thin. So let's grab another piece and hope I don't cut my thumb off. Kevin got really mad at me because I definitely sliced like a good part of this thumb off. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm actually missing part of that thumb. Uh, like the second week of quarantine and he was like, you're gonna give me COVID because I have to go to Walgreens for you. So we're gonna take this, just express this across the top, just to get a little bit of that orange oil in there because I think that's also just like a beautiful flavor that comes out. So now we can do two things for our garnish. If you wanna get real fancy, they have these at Trader Joe's, or if you have a dehydrator, which, good on you. Uh, I got this uh, with a drink that I actually ordered, and you know, waste not, what not. Um, so I pulled this out. This is a desiccated dried orange. So you can actually pop this right in, right there on your glass, maybe that way. There we go, to kind of go with the marmalade feel. Or if you wanna do something else, which is I guess kind of cheesy, but I wanted to do it anyways. I took three really thin slices of orange. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make them in the shape of a little star for the five star general. And I'm going to just pin it with a little tiny clothespin. I don't know, or maybe this looks more like that, uh, like biohazard sign, but that works too. I think I like the dried orange better. But anyways, that's kind of like a spider. And here's your orange spider. Hopefully there are no camel spiders in Northern Africa when he was there because those things are horrifying. So cheers, y'all. This is a twist on an Omar Bradley, which is a twist on an old fashioned. So cheers, y'all. Stay safe out there and wear your masks. It's the responsible thing to do then you can just go and have a drink afterwards and we all just want to go home and have a drink afterwards and be safe and healthy thanks guys cheers <laughs>